Hello everyone and thank you for uh, joining us today. My name is Danielle Cameron. I'm the Executive Director with Interior Health overseeing the Central Okanagan Community Health Services. It's really a great pleasure to welcome you all here today for this exciting announcement with the Ministry of Mental Health and Addictions about supporting people facing complex mental health, addiction and housing challenges throughout British Columbia. Interior Health would like to start off by acknowledging that we're meeting today on the traditional unceded ancestral territory of the Silks Okanagan people. It's a pleasure to be able to work, live and collaborate with our partners in this area. We are honoured today to begin our announcement with a blessing from Elder Rose Luby, a Silks Community Elder. Elder Rose. Hello. Welcome to our wonderful, beautiful territory that we're in, the territory of the Silk. We're very happy to be part of this opening today. It's a great need in our province and a great need in our community. I represent West Bank First Nation, which is just across the lake, and I'm part of an of a organization where we have eight communities that are involved with our Okanagan uh, Alliance. We have eight bands that are part of it. We have West Bank First Nation, Okanagan Indian Band, the Merritt Indian Band, Lower and Upper Similkameen, Osuyas, Oliver, and the Confederated Tribes of Colville. We're very, uh, we're very much into what goes into our, pro in our lands in the area. Our lands cover 9,600 square hectares of land and they go from Wilbur, Washington, north to Revelstoke, east to the Kootenai Lakes, and west to, to Merritt. We're very, very happy to have a medical facility like this coming into the area. As we've, we've tried our, we've attempted to put our own facility on, on our reserve lands, which hasn't come about, but we're still in that process. Uh, we have uh, our little community, West Bank, at one time boasted the highest uh, shopping area per capita in the province of BC. And we're trying to keep that moving. We have many businesses coming in and our population is growing like anything else in the Okanagan. I'd like to thank you all for having me here today. I hope all goes well. I can't wait until the doors open on the facility. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Rose, for opening us in a good way. Appreciate the words from your community and share your enthusiasm for what we're announcing today. I'm now pleased to introduce Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, the Honourable Jennifer Whiteside. Thank you very much, uh, Danielle, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jennifer Whiteside, I'm BC's Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, and it is uh, such a, an honour and a pleasure to be able to join you here today on the traditional territory of the Silts and Okanagan people on this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day in Kelowna. Wow, do you ever put on a lovely show for, uh, for, for visitors. Uh, it is wonderful to look out and uh, see so many uh, friends and colleagues to be joined by um, uh, Mayor Dias uh, as well as um, our city, uh, your city council from the city of Kelowna. Um, to be joined by um, uh, folks from, uh, from the Interior Health Authority. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Roger uh, Helpenny, the, uh, the Chair of the Interior Health Authority Board, was able to join us today, but uh, I know that the uh, IHA is really uh, excited about, about this work that we're doing together. And so many community members uh, and advocates, um, including uh, Sherry and her granddaughter uh, Kylie from the, uh, the lived experience circle on homelessness and it's a real reminder of the importance of the work that we do and how important it is to include people with lived and living experience in everything that we do. So thank you all for being here today for uh, this really important uh, announcement. 
Now we're standing here in the middle of a beautiful field of, of bluebells um, that is very soon going to become a foundation and a future site for recovery and support for those who are facing challenges of mental health and addiction and who are at risk of homelessness. This is a symbol of our commitment to building solutions that reach to the roots of, the, of our community's needs. And I, I, have, to, I have to say that, uh, um, acknowledge that yesterday we marked eight years since the province declared a public health emergency in response to the toxic drug crisis. And in British Columbia, we have lost more than 14,000 members of our communities, our loved ones, people who are our brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, friends, neighbors, and there is no community in British Columbia or indeed across our country that has not been touched by this crisis. And that is why we are working so urgently to provide the services that people need when and where they need them. And this includes working across the continuum of care, including harm reduction, early intervention, prevention, medication assisted treatment, uh, treatment beds, uh, outpatient treatment, virtual treatment, and of course, uh, housing supports. Because we know that people grappling with serious mental health and addiction issues are often struggling in many aspects of their life. And too often, they find themselves trapped in a painful cycle, bouncing from one temporary solution to another, from shelters to emergency rooms, sometimes to, to our, through jail cells, through our correction system. And instead of getting the care that they need in a coordinated and seamless way, they just hit another closed door. And so we see that struggle. I know you see that struggle in your community. And we feel the urgency of this. And so in 2023, our province unveiled our Homes for People plan, which included the expansion of complex care housing. Complex care housing it provides the highest level of support for people who are facing a mix of complex and overlapping challenges. It helps people who are living with particularly difficult mental health issues, including addiction and other health concerns that complicate their everyday life. They may be living with brain injuries. They may have mobility issues. And I'm happy to tell you that of the 500 units that we announced in phase one of the program, we have 443 people in British Columbia receiving um, care and support in their homes through this program. And today, we are so proud to be here to launch phase two of complex care housing, an expansion of 240 units of complex care housing across British Columbia. Phase two will be new builds, which means that more people with complex care needs can find hope right in their own community. And it will also help to contribute towards alleviating the housing crisis. We will be allocating 200 of these units across a number of communities, Abbotsford, Burnaby, Kamloops, right here, right here in Kelowna, Nanaimo, New Westminster, Prince George, Seashelt, Surrey, Vancouver, and Victoria. We're also dedicating 40 units specifically for Indigenous-led initiatives, partnering closely with Indigenous communities to, prior to prioritize Indigenous needs. I, I want to stop for a moment just to express my deep appreciation to Mayor Dias and to the City Council uh, in, in Kelowna for and their whole team uh, who have been really leading the way. They have been er, er, huge advocates um, of complex care housing along with the BC Urban Mayor Caucus. And Kelowna has really come to the table as a true partner offering support, land, and a commitment to help us expedite the building of 20 new units right here where we are standing. And this adds to 20 beds that were already um, announced in Kelowna during uh, phase one of complex care housing. And I think this really demonstrates uh, what we can accomplish when we have strong partnerships um, in, a in a world where we have to work with, uh, act with urgency to support people and to save lives. 
This also highlights our shared commitment for moving uh, to moving from planning to action uh, as quickly as we can so that we provide real transformative support for individuals today and tomorrow. You know, we know that everybody's uh, journey from, uh, to recovery is different. And of course, every community is facing different challenges. And our approach is to really work with partners on the ground, with our health authorities, with community advocates, with municipalities, to meet the unique needs of the community based on what the experts on the ground already know. So in some communities, these units will be in standalone buildings, um, such as will be developed here. And in others, complex care housing units may be combined with supportive housing or other affordable housing units. But what we know is critical uh, and what is the, the foundation of this, of this approach to this kind of housing is to provide voluntary person-centered health, cultural and social supports. All of this under the same room, uh, uh, the same roof where people are living so that we can help them stabilize their lives. It involves an integrated team working directly with residents and their support network and together they're making sure that clients receive the supports they need where and when they need them. Budget 2024 builds on our Budget 2023 historic $1 billion investment in mental health and addictions with 215, an additional $215 million to keep our mental health and addiction services strong and growing. And both Budget 2022 and 2023 invested a total of $430 million in complex care housing to develop this very uh, program. We are going to continue to do the important work that is necessary with, uh, with our partners, with our health authorities, with community advocates, with cities, to make sure that we do the very best by British Columbians who are at risk of homelessness, who have deep needs, uh, so that we can support them uh, to live uh, independently and safely in their own homes. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here with you today. Thank you, Minister Whiteside. I think I share with your enthusiasm for this this great announcement that we're here talking about today. I'd like to now introduce to the podium the Mayor of Kelowna, Tom Diaz. Thank you, Danielle. And also, thank you, Minister Whiteside, for your comments, for being here with us today, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am joined here this afternoon with some of my council colleagues, uh, Councillor Luke Stack, Councillor Maxine DeHart, Councillor Rick Weber, Councillor Laura Woldridge, Councillor Ron Cannon, Councillor Mohini Singh, uh, Councillor Gord Lovegrove, and also in thoughts, uh, Councillor Charlie Hodge. And it is important that we come together today just to recognize um, what is happening and something that this council has been a, it has been a priority for us. I want to thank you, Minister Whiteside, alongside the province of British Columbia, Interior Health and BC Housing for their continued collaboration with the City of Kelowna. The City of Kelowna has been a leading advocate in the discussion of complex care. In 2021, together with the province, we published an advocacy paper that helped shape the model of care which we believe has helped pave the way towards today's milestone announcement. In addition to that, just over a year ago, this council set its priorities and advocating for complex care was on the top of our list for our community. And now, one year later, we are here to celebrate meaningful action on this commitment. Today, as we welcome a much needed investment in our community, we strive to provide dignified and compassionate care and housing for our most vulnerable residents. Kelowna is grateful to be the recipient of this next phase of complex care delivery that is being announced today and will be delivered across the province. This new facility will not only address a critical gap in our system of care, but will also help reduce the pressures on Kelowna's RCMP, fire and bylaw services, the commissionaires, our emergency departments, paramedics and ambulance services, and also our businesses and our residents by offering a more and appropriate effective level of care for people with complex needs. 
This project, to which the city has contributed $4 million of municipal land, includes 20 dedicated complex care spaces and a minimum of 20 additional supportive housing units. On this very spot where we stand today, we will be building as quickly as possible and opening the doors to the new facility which will have a significant impact on the health and safety of our most vulnerable residents offering them the security of housing, care and treatment. On behalf of myself and my council colleagues, we are proud to continue to work closely with the province of BC, BC Housing and Interior Health on finding solutions to the complex care challenges of community safety issues, social health, housing and addictions that affects not only our city and region but the province as a whole. Through collaborative initiatives like this we are making it get a difference and together we will strive to create a safer and more livable city for everyone. So again on behalf of myself and my council colleagues thank you Minister Whiteside for your continued support, partnership and being here with us today to celebrate this announcement for the province. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Diaz. I would uh, now like to bring to the podium Ashley Halston. Ashley's a social worker with Interior Health, working with the population that this future build is going to serve. Thank you, Danielle. <clears throat> Working as a social worker in complex care here in Kelowna, I have witnessed firsthand the extreme challenges faced by individuals living with complex mental health and substance use needs and housing instability. I feel optimistic about the upcoming 240 new complex care housing units across British Columbia and specifically the additional 40 units here in the interior health region. For those dealing with challenges like mental health and substance use alongside housing instability, these units represent more than just a roof over their heads. They signify a valuable opportunity for support and stability. For far too long, individuals navigating these challenges have been caught in a cycle of insecurity, isolation and limited support. Today is an important step in improving that support and recognizing their specific needs. Complex care housing offers person-centered care with services where services are focused on individual specific needs, offering personalized support for those living with mental health and substance use complexities. Many of our clients have shared with me their previous fears and uncertainties about finding safe and supportive housing. They have expressed gratitude for the personalized wraparound services offered through complex care. Today's announcement offers the same opportunity to more people in need. As a social worker, my role is to provide compassionate support and guidance to those in need. With the introduction of these new housing units, we have a unique opportunity to offer safe homes where people can focus on what is important to them. Moving forward, let us do so with empathy and determination, knowing that every individual deserves the opportunity to live a fulfill, fulfilling life within their community. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley, for the important work that you do helping those in our community. As we close, I'd like to mention a few thoughts of my own. Today's announcement signifies the importance of coordinated care in the form of complex care housing. Too often, individuals in our communities and communities across the province find themselves in a cycle of instability, moving from one temporary solution, whether it be housing or shelter, to another, without ever finding a place to call their own. But with the introduction of these new units and housing, there's a tangible opportunity that breaks the cycle to provide stability for these individuals. And provide support that they so desperately need. On behalf of everyone involved today, I thank you for joining us and I will turn it over to Terry to moderate questions. Thank, thank you, Danielle. We would now open the floor up for questions. 
For media in the room, please line up at the microphone provided and wait to be called. Please make sure to provide your full name and outlet. For anyone that has a question on the phone, please press star one and enter the queue. Media will be limited to one question and one follow-up only. Remember, for those on the phone, star one to join the queue. We will now take questions in person. Um, it's Brady Strachan with CBC here. Maybe my, my first question is for Interior Health. Do we know how many people would fit the definition of needing complex care in Kelowna? Just to get an idea of what the population of, uh, the, the amount of need there is here in the city. I, I would say from the, our experience with the first beds that we opened uh, in starting in January 2023, there is a need uh, and, and we continue to identify people that can benefit from this type of housing. So exact numbers, no, but we do know. 200, 500, roughly? I, I, can't, I can't answer that with any degree of specificity, but I, I can say with confidence that there are people in our community that both need this kind of housing as well as will benefit from this housing that we've announced today. And I, I would agree with that. I think anybody living in Kelowna would, would know going to the rail trail encampment downtown. I'm just wondering, we have 20 existing beds and another 20 beds for Kelowna. Uh, does that, is that enough? Does that go anywhere towards meeting the needs of the many, many people that clearly have complex care needs with uh, addictions and uh, mental health for Kelowna? So I would say that we're we're progressing to build more to meet the needs. I, I, I think that what we, we focus on is providing the opportunities for people to access the services. And these 20 beds are going to uh, really enhance the opportunities for people in our community to get the care and housing that they need, while also acknowledging that there's a whole spectrum of other services that can benefit folks in our community that have needs. Need the need that's there though, or is it you know, what, what percentage will it meet the need is what I'm wondering. I, I can't answer that and with accuracy at this point. It will it will get us to a better place. That we could get, that you could send out, is that are those numbers that we could possibly get? Oh, our interior health doesn't specifically has that because there's multiple contributing factors that would make somebody eligible for this type of housing. But uh, we know that there's many. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Madison Reed with Castanet. I'm just wondering if you can speak to kind of the specifics of uh, how someone will get into this type of facility and how long uh, long term their stay might be. Yeah, I mean, I can just say generally, and maybe just also to just follow along with the with the previous question that you know, I mean, we're working along a continuum of housing, uh, building out a lot of affordable housing, a lot of supportive housing. Uh, you know, in, in the interior, Interior Health is working to expand uh, outpatient services, virtual services, bed-based services for people who, you know, require um, particular, uh, you know, in, in, in the case of addictions, treatment care. So, you know, this complex care housing is one part of the housing continuum that fills a particular need. There's no termination date on the services. It really is meant to be uh, patient-centered in terms of the... Uh, um, the kind of the nature of the services and care that are provided to the individual, but maybe I'll just uh, ask uh, Danielle or Ashley to talk about the the way in which the partners they're working working with to get folks into these spaces. So people come in through complex care through a process uh, that we uh, have coordinated with multiple partners in town called coordinated access, and and that's a process that's in place throughout the province, as well as uh, something that we've been using to help identify the people that are currently living in complex care. So uh, we, we provide inputs uh, from multiple agencies and uh, we meet regularly to identify those that are most in need and uh, the best fit for the services. Thank you. Do you have a follow up? Are we looking, uh, do we have some sort of a time frame as to when we think uh, the building will be up and running? Well, what I will say is that uh, we're very grateful to the City of Kelowna for the land that uh, they have contributed to this, uh, to this project. It makes it much, uh, mu it definitely expedites when we don't have to go and search, uh, search for a site. And uh, we are working with uh, my ministry, BC Housing and the City, to develop an approach that is going to deliver the, the units in uh, as, quick, as quick a time frame as possible. 
Thank you very much. Thanks to everyone for being here. That's all the questions we have for today. And the event ends. Thank you. Did you have a question? Oh, we have one more Sorry, question. I think there was another question there. Okay, yes, go right ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Camp from, it's Camp Mogat from Kelowna now. We often hear people say that we need more treatment. Mm -hmm. And now we hear mm -hmm. this is called complex mm -hmm. care. And I'm sure things are complex in terms of that care. But does it answer that call? Are we talking about treatment for addictions here? No, this is not meant to be, this is not bed-based treatment for addictions. Complex care, care housing is, has been designed to bring services to individuals who are at risk of homelessness. Um, and people who are maybe cycling through episodes of episodic homelessness. So these are individuals that have very, uh, maybe have very complex needs, complex mental health or physical health and or physical health needs. Um, who maybe have uh, an acquired brain injury due to uh, to overdose uh, and those uh, those kinds of supports the kinds of supports that Ashley talked about and actually maybe we can just I'll just uh, turn it over to Ashley when I'm when I'm finished so she can give you a sense of the kinds of situations that were um, the and the kinds of uh, circumstances that people are being cared for here uh, but with respect to uh, you know actual you know treatment for either you know for you know people who need medically um, supervised detox or who require a treatment program um, as a first stage to getting them on a, on a path to wellness. I mean, there are many other services that Interior Health is standing up to, uh, to accomplish that particular, that particular objective. But Ashley, can you maybe just give a, a sense of what kinds of situations you're providing, folks are providing, getting care for in complex care? Hi. Um, I think the best way to answer this question is to say that the services that we provide are client-centered. So it's what the client wants at the time they want it. So that can look like a range of things. It could be treatment, um, but it, it might not be treatment. That's not what, uh, they, they may not want that in the moment or they may not be ready for that. Um, sometimes goals are to reconnect with family um, sometimes goals are medical, physical, um, so it's not just uh, that treatment that you're referring to. Thanks. Do you have a follow-up? Great. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and that